Hey, it's me, the Rhino, for Survival Skills 101, here today to talk to you about how to clear a Type 3 malfunction. Let's do this. Oh, man, I think I hurt my pancreas just now. Jeez. Okay, before we start, Rhino's going to go over the four firearm safety rules. These are very important. Rule number one, treat every firearm as if it's loaded. Rule number two, never point your weapon at anything you're not willing to destroy at that millisecond. Rule number three, keep your finger off the trigger until pointed in and you've made the conscious decision to fire. And rule number four, know your target and what's behind it. It's now time to explain to you a type three, count them three, malfunction. They call this the mother of all malfunction. In a gunfight, man, you do not want to see a type three malfunction. But you know, it's kind of common. It's especially common on, on Glock 9 millimeters, especially when women are firing, because they're not putting enough pressure on the backstop to have the slide uh, adequately do its job, and you typically get a type three malfunction. Now, before we start, I am going to show you the classical way to demonstrate a type 3 malfunction. There's a, a number of ways to do this and you'll be saying, oh, I don't do it that way. I don't really care. I'm showing you the classical way because you can do it on any weapon that you pick up. I know there's specialized ways. I just don't care. And basically what a type 3 malfunction is, is failure to extract. I just shot this round and this case is still lodged in my barrel. And what happens is the extractors don't pull this round out and eject it out of the ejection port. While the whole time, the magazine, around in the magazine wants to go in its place. So basically, it's a failure to extract, and they call it, a, more importantly, a double feed. Two rounds trying to occupy the same space, and it really gums up your, your firearm. So we want to fix this. It's very important. So basically, that's what it's going to look like. However, I am going to use a dummy round, all right, because it just works a little bit better. And basically what you want to do is you want to point your gun down at the ground, you want to take that round, and you want to put it right in the barrel, just like that. Then what we're going to do is we are going to take a magazine, insert it into the magazine well, as you can see, and now I'm going to close my slide. Now before I go on any farther, if you watch the Type 1 video or the Type 2 video, I was talking about going to the doctor. If you go to the doctor, the doctor's going to say, go, hey, what's wrong? You're going to say, hey, I feel sick, I have a fever, I have a sore throat. And by the symptoms that you have, he's going to make a diagnosis. And when he makes a diagnosis, he can give you the cure. All right, well, a, a symptom of a type 3 malfunction is a spongy trigger, just like a type 2 malfunction. Now, with a Glock, you got to trip the trigger right here. All right, so take a look at it. Two rounds trying to occupy the same space. I get a spongy trigger. All right, so here's what we do to clear this. I point in, I'm firing, all of a sudden I get a spongy trigger. It's either a type two or type three malfunction, like I said, I need to look. I look, ah, oh, the mother of all malfunctions, all right? Not something you wanna see in a gunfight. So you practice clearing this. And basically the classical way to do that is that this is how I go through it. I look, lock, strip, rack, 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 three times and you want to go, you want to keep pushing hard when you do it so you can get that extractor to send that round out. So rack, 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 you take a fresh magazine, index it properly, insert it into the magazine, and you rack the slide. Come back up on target. So once again, it's look, lock, strip, Rack, rack, rack. Why three racks? Because two's not enough and four's too many. Three, rack, rack, rack. Insert the fresh magazine and rack. Okay, I'm gonna set this up again. You take a round, place it right in the barrel. You take a fresh magazine, insert it into the magazine well, and then you're going to close the slide. Two rounds trying to occupy the same space. Glocks, you're going to need to trip your trigger. I'm firing. The symptom is a spongy trigger. I need to look now. Oh, crap. It's a type 3 malfunction. So I look, lock, strip, rack, 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 
grab a fresh magazine, insert, rack. Come right back up on target. I make the conscious decision not to fire. I come down to the ready. Okay, I'm gonna set this type three malfunction up for a third and final time. I point the gun down, take my round, place it in the barrel, take my magazine, insert it into the magazine well, and I let my slide go. I wanna trip my trigger, because it's a Glock, and basically that's what I'm looking at. All right, now, on this third time, I'm gonna show you a few nifty tricks. Basically, I've pointed in and I'm shooting. When I have a problem, I can always add this into my training. For right now, you can stand still until you get it down. But as I, I add this uh, eventually, what I'm gonna do is I get a spongy trigger. I need to look, is it a type two or type three? As I do that, I simulate moving to cover. I'm gonna take a step off to the side. And again, that simulates moving to cover, meaning basically I could go 50 feet, 10 feet, whatever, but when I'm having a problem and I've gotta look, I'm simulating moving to cover. Moving is very important when you have problems. All right, so and basically what it is, is it is um, represented in just one step to the side, either left or right, just so you'll get in the habit of moving. Okay, so I'm over here, I'm pointed in, and I'm firing my weapon. I get a spongy trigger, I check it out, it is a type three malfunction, crud. Now, this could have been my final magazine. I have no more ammo and this is it. So I don't want to drop it out because I don't have another magazine to put in there. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this nifty little trick. Now when I'm doing this, uh, basically this round is just going to fall out when I take the magazine out. In real life, the, um, the case is going to be embedded in there because it got hot and it expanded and it won't come out uh, when the extractors are trying to pull it out. So it'll be stuck in there for real. So basically, I'm firing, I look, I want to lock, and instead of stripping and just dropping it on the ground, I strip it out, and I'm just gonna put it in my pinky finger. Notice that dropped out, it's not gonna do that in real life. So basically what I wanna do is I'm going to grab, I go rack, 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 and when I do that, I push full, I push full, I push full to get that sucker to come out of there. All right, now I have my magazine right here, I take it, I insert it into the magazine well, I reach up, rack the slide, come back up on target. I make the conscious decision not to fire. It goes down to the ready, my finger goes straight. That guy, I don't know, could have taken off, dropped his weapon, fell down, whatever. Uh, I don't want to automatically shoot. That is how you do a classical type three malfunction clearance. Okay, there you go. How to clear a type three malfunction. Hey, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe. For Survival Skills 101, I'm the Rhino. I think I'm hurt. Are you prepared to look forward? I need you to call me an ambulance. You're an ambulance. Oh, very funny, ha ha ha.